Hello and welcome to this short video brought to you by tutor to you. This video is going to be looking at the AQA A-Level specification for psychology and in particular we are going to be recapping research methods and case studies alongside content analysis. Let's begin by thinking about what a case study actually is. Case studies are very detailed investigations of an individual or small group of people, an event or an institution, usually regarding an unusual phenomenon or biographical event of interest to a research field. Due to a small sample, the case study can conduct an in-depth analysis of the individual or the group in question. Examples of case studies include Little Albert, Patient Hayek, and little hands. So understanding what a case study is should be quite straightforward. It's the in-depth analysis of an individual, a small group of people, an institution or an event. However, one of the more common questions within the exams surrounding case studies is regarding the evaluation of case studies, so the strengths and limitations. Let's begin by looking at the strengths of case studies. So a first strength that you could go for is that it creates opportunities for a rich yield of data and the depth of analysis can in turn bring high levels of validity. Now, like mentioned on the previous slide, in a case study, there is specific focus on just one individual, one event, a really small group of people. So that small sample size means that you can spend much longer finding out much more information about that event or that person. In turn, you get higher levels of authentic data. Another strength is that studying abnormal psychology can give insight into how something works when it's functioning correctly, such as brain damage on memory. Think back to patient care. A final strength is that the detail collected on a single case might lead to interesting findings that conflict with current theories. And in this way, it can simulate new paths for research. So we've just considered the strengths of case studies, but what might be the weaknesses? First weakness, there is little control over a number of variables involved in a case study, so it's difficult to confidently establish any causal relationships between variables that you might get in an experiment. Another weakness, they are unusual by nature. Case studies, we tend to investigate people who are unusual, something strange might have happened to them. There's a behaviour that we can't explain. So as a result, they will have poor reliability as replicating them exactly will be very unlikely. A third weakness, due to the small sample size, it's unlikely that findings can be generalised to a whole population. Remember, the bigger the sample size, rule of thumb, it's normally that the findings will be more representative of your target population. But if you've got a very small sample size, then it's unlikely that your findings will be representative. A final weakness is that the researcher may become so involved with the study that they exhibit bias in their interpretation and presentation of the data making it challenging to distinguish what is truly objective and factual and what is subjective and based on research and bias. Because the researcher might be studying that one case for such a long time and dedicating so much time to it, they might become so involved that they forget to take a critical stand back. So now we've taken a look at case studies and the strengths and weaknesses associated with case studies, we're going to quickly go through content analysis. Content analysis is a type of observational research in which people are studied indirectly via the communications that they have produced. The forms of communication that might be subject to content analysis vary, and it might include spoken interaction, so conversation or speech presentations. It might be in written form, so using someone's texts or emails, or broader media examples, books, magazines, TV programmes or films. The aim of content analysis is to summarise and describe this communication in a systematic way so overall conclusions can be drawn. The initial stage of all content analysis is coding. Coding is where you turn your data into quantitative data systematically. So once your data has been collected, the researcher will read through several times and make themselves familiar with the data. The researcher will then identify coding units in their work. These units vary widely depending on the data used, but an example would be the number of positive or negative words used by a mother to describe her child's behaviour or the number of swear words in a film. The data is analysed by applying the coding units and a tally is made of the number of times a coding unit appears, which is how we create quantitative data. So let's look back at point two 
and we have the example of the number of positive or negative words used by a mother to describe her child's behaviour. Now, this is quite a straightforward one. Your coding units here might be positive words and negative words. And then you might transcribe an interview that you've had with a mother, which means writing it out verbatim. You would then go through this interview and every time you see a positive word used by the mother, you could tally it. And every time you see a negative word used by the mother, you could tally it. And this would give you some indication of how positively or negatively the mother speaks about her child. So we've just considered how content analysis and in particular coding can create quantitative data. However, content analysis might also involve generating qualitative data. This is normally data in word form. And one example is thematic analysis. The process of coding and the identifications of themes are closely linked, as themes might only emerge once data has been coded. And this is why we said on the previous slide that when you are carrying out content analysis, the first step should always be to code your data. Then, if you wanted to turn these codes into qualitative data, you could undergo thematic analysis. A theme refers to any idea, implicit or explicit, that keeps cropping up in a data set. So when you look at this term thematic analysis, thematic analysis is identifying themes that appear. So after the data has been coded, if you want to undergo thematic analysis and turn your data into qualitative data by looking for emergent themes, there are a few more steps that you will need to go through. So once your data has been transcribed, if it's necessary, so if you're wanting to look at an interview, for example, it's reviewed repeatedly so that the researcher can identify trends in the meaning conveyed by the language which is used. These are likely to be more descriptive than the coding units you originally came up with. For example, socially anxious students might be described in interviews with teachers as struggling to interact with peers or not wanting to be present in class. These may be developed into broader categories such as peer relationships and preferred learning styles. The themes identified are reanalyzed so that they become more refined and relevant and given shorthand codes. The researcher can then annotate the transcript with the codes that have been identified. The themes identified can be used to support or challenge existing theories with specific examples of data or quotes being used as supporting evidence. We're going to finish by evaluating content analysis. So this is looking at the strengths and limitations. One strength is that it can avoid ethical issues associated with psychological research as the data often already exists in the public domain. It's also flexible in that it can produce qualitative and quantitative data depending on the aims of the research. However, the identification of suitable themes and codes is very subjective and it's decided by the researcher alone meaning that conclusions lack any scrutiny or objectivity. It's very subjective to that particular researcher. Causality cannot be established because it merely describes the data. And as it only describes the data, it cannot extract any deeper meaning or explanation for the data patterns which arise. Thank you for watching this AQA A-Level Psychology video brought to you by tutor to you which focused on research methods and case studies alongside content analysis.